What happens when an engine is so powerful, so iconic, and so unstoppable that it becomes its own worst enemy? Can a machine really be too good for the world it was built to serve? And what does it say about us when something so beloved has to be killed off? Not because it failed, but because it succeeded too well. Today, we're diving into the story of the Detroit Diesel 8V92, an engine that roared so loud it became the anthem of American trucking. An engine that could outpull, outlast, and outshine its competition. An engine that entire careers, industries, and cultures were built around. And yet, despite all this, it was banned. Not by official decree with flashing headlines, but slowly, methodically, crushed by regulations, economics, and the changing values of an industry. So, why did the Detroit 8V92 vanish? Why was an engine that truckers swore by banned from the roads it once ruled? And was it really killed by emissions and fuel efficiency, or was it something deeper? Let's find out. Birth of a Beast The Detroit 8V92 wasn't a product of luck or marketing. It was forged in the fires of war, perfected on the open seas, and unleashed on the highways of America. Detroit Diesel had been working on two-stroke engines since the 1930s. Their designs weren't the quiet, polite engines you'd find in family sedans. These were hard-edged, industrial, military-grade monsters. Engines meant to run in tanks, in landing craft, and on ships that didn't get the luxury of pit stops or downtime. During World War II, Detroit diesel engines became legendary. Rugged, simple, and built to run under punishment. They earned a reputation among sailors and soldiers for one thing. They just wouldn't quit. By the 1960s, that same DNA began filtering into the commercial world. Detroit Series 92 engines, massive, two-stroke designs, were already powering marine vessels, buses, and heavy-duty machines. But engineers weren't satisfied. They wanted to push further. That push gave birth to the 8V92. It wasn't a typical engine. It wasn't even a scaled-up version of something else. It was in a league of its own. With eight cylinders arranged in a V-shape, displacing 736 cubic inches and producing over 425 horsepower with 1,400 pound-feet of torque. The 8V92 was closer to a battleship heart than a highway truck engine. Truckers didn't just get a motor, they got a mechanical sledgehammer that could pull 80,000 pounds up a mountain without breaking a sweat. And it wasn't just about brute force. The 8V92 used wet cylinder liners that made maintenance faster and cheaper. Its roots blower gave it a signature whine and rumble that could be heard long before the truck came into sight. To own one was to have power. To drive one was to command respect. But every legend has a beginning, and this one began at full throttle. The Soundtrack of the Highway Close your eyes and picture the American highway in the late 1970s. Diesel prices are low, the trucking industry is booming, and deregulation has opened the door for independent owner-operators to chase opportunity. Now imagine the sound. Not the quiet hum of modern engines, but a deep, chest-rattling roar. That's the Detroit 8V92. Truck stops echoed with its voice. Drivers could recognize the 8V92 from miles away. It was more than noise. It was a declaration. A signal that here came a trucker who wasn't afraid of any hill, any load, or any challenge. Truckers loved it because it made their lives easier. Steep grades that slowed others to a crawl? The 8V92 hauled through. Endless loads that tested endurance. The engine didn't blink. Million-mile durability meant an operator could stake their livelihood on it. And many did. Owner-operators in particular swore by it. This was their lifeline, their ticket to independence. Stories spread about 8V92s hauling double trailers over the Rockies, idling for days without issue or shrugging off punishing heat that would have crippled lesser machines. The sound itself became part of trucking culture. It was music on the highway, a song of power, freedom, and reliability. But just like any hit song, once it got too loud, 
someone was bound to call the cops. The cracks in the armor. For a while, the 8V92 looked invincible. Detroit Diesel's market share soared past 40%. Magazines put the engine on their covers. Operators lined up to buy trucks powered by it. But under the hood, cracks were forming. The first problem was fuel. The very thing that made the 8V92 a beast, its two-stroke design, also made it thirsty. While competitors' four-stroke engines could get six or seven miles per gallon, the Detroit guzzled fuel, sometimes struggling to break four. At a time when diesel was cheap, no one cared. But the oil shocks of the 1970s had already shown how fragile fuel prices could be. As the 80s rolled on, costs started mattering more. And when fleets ran the math, the 8V92's fuel consumption wasn't just a quirk, it was a liability. The second problem was emissions. The same two-stroke scavenging process that gave the engine its incredible torque also let unburned fuel slip out the exhaust. Add in high oil consumption, and you have a recipe for black smoke. In the 1970s, nobody cared much. By the 1980s, regulators were paying attention. By the 1990s, it was a deal breaker. The third problem? Technology was catching up. Competitors like Cummins and Caterpillar were rolling out advanced four-stroke engines with electronic fuel injection, turbocharging, and better engine management. These engines matched the Detroit's power, but ran cleaner, burned less fuel, and cost less to operate long-term. The 8V92 was still the king of brute strength, but brute strength wasn't enough anymore. The ban in everything but name. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, set the trap, even if they never intended it that way. In 1988, the first serious heavy-duty emission standards hit. For most four-stroke designs, compliance was hard, but possible. For the 8V92, it was nearly impossible. The engine's two-stroke DNA meant high oil use and incomplete combustion. Problems that simply couldn't be tuned away. Detroit Diesel tried. They added electronic controls, tinkered with fuel systems, and played with turbocharging. But every fix chipped away at what made the 8V92 great. It became more complex, less reliable, and still couldn't match emissions requirements without losing its soul. The death blow came with the 1994 EPA standards. Meeting them would have required an almost total redesign. After decades of dominance, Detroit Diesel had to make a choice. Sink millions into saving a design trapped by its own architecture, or walk away. In 1993, they announced the unthinkable. The 8V92, along with all of Detroit's two-stroke truck engines, would be discontinued. There was no official ban with headlines screaming outlawed, but for truckers, it may as well have been. The EPA hadn't banned the 8V92 directly. They'd just made survival impossible. Truckers who refuse to let go. Here's where the story gets human. Imagine being a trucker in 1993. You've hauled with an 8V92 for a decade. It's your partner, your lifeline, the reason you can pay bills and put food on the table. And now, Detroit says it's done. No more production, no more future. Some truckers felt betrayed. Others rushed to buy brand new 8V92 powered trucks before the line shut down. They wanted to hold on as long as possible. There are stories of drivers like Red Lawson from Oklahoma, who bought three rigs in 1994 just to keep spare engines alive for years. Or fleet managers who stockpiled parts, knowing the day would come when replacements would dry up. Even as new four-strokes took over, you'd still hear the distinctive growl of a Detroit on the highway. For many, it wasn't just a machine. It was a way of life. And that's what made its disappearance feel like a ban. It wasn't just the end of an engine. It was the end of an era. Legacy of a Legend By 1995, the last 8V92 rolled off the line. What was once the heartbeat of American trucking became a relic. But relics can be powerful. Today, the 8V92 has a cult following. Classic truck shows feature them proudly. Collectors rebuild them, polish them, and fire them up just to hear that unmistakable rumble. 
Enthusiasts still swap stories about the time they hauled a mountain's worth of steel or dragged a double load across the desert without breaking a sweat. And in a strange way, the 8V92 lives on in spirit. Its influence shaped how engines were designed. Its story taught companies about the dangers of over-optimizing for one era without preparing for the next. For truckers, it remains a symbol of independence, strength, and raw mechanical beauty. The kind of engine you could fix with a wrench and some grit, not a laptop and software updates. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't clean. It wasn't efficient. But it was unforgettable. Was it really banned? Technically, no law said ban the Detroit 8V92. But ask anyone who lived through it, and they'll tell you the truth. It was banned by reality. Banned by emission standards that it could never meet. Banned by fuel prices that made it too costly. Banned by technology that evolved past it. Banned by a world that no longer valued raw, unapologetic power. It's a reminder that sometimes greatness isn't enough. Sometimes being the best in one way makes you impossible in another. The 8V92 wasn't defeated by weakness. It was defeated by strength in the wrong era. Lessons for the future. So what do we learn from this story? The 8V92 shows us that machines are more than tools. They're reflections of the times they're built in. The 1970s and 80s wanted big, loud, powerful engines, and the 8V92 delivered. But by the 1990s, the world wanted clean, efficient, and cost-effective. The engine couldn't change fast enough. It also reminds us of something deeper. Every innovation carries a hidden weakness. The very things that make a machine extraordinary can also make it fragile when the world shifts. And it forces us to ask, in our modern age of electric motors, hybrids, and AI-driven systems, are we building engines and technologies that might one day face the same fate? Are we repeating the cycle, falling in love with machines that the future will quietly ban without ever using the word? The Roar That Wouldn't Die The Detroit 8V92 wasn't just an engine. It was an era. A chapter in American trucking written in smoke, steel, and horsepower. It was banned, yes, but not forgotten. Its roar still echoes in the memories of those who drove it, in the hands of collectors who preserve it, and in the culture of trucking that it helped define. It was too powerful for its own good, too specialized for a changing world, and in that, it teaches us something timeless. Power alone isn't enough. To survive, even legends must adapt. But sometimes it's better to burn bright, loud, and unforgettable than to fade away quietly. So here's the question for you. In a future of silent electric highways, are we losing something essential? Something that engines like the 8V92 gave us? An identity, a sound, a soul. Let us know your thoughts. And if you believe stories like this deserve to be remembered, join us again. Because engines may die, but the legends never should. Stay blessed and stay curious.